morning, Mets fans, and welcome to a Tuesday edition of Driving with Mr. Met. I am Mr. Met, and um, I didn't think I was going to be back today. I thought I might record a video tomorrow, but uh, I had to come back today because I read some disturbing rumors. Um, I don't even know if they're rumors, but I read a, uh, what I believe to be a disturbing story about a potential trade partner for the Mets and a potential candidate to take over second base in said rumored trade. And that trade candidate and rumored second baseman is Ian Kinsler. And uh, I'm opposed to this idea. And today I'm gonna to talk about why. At uh, a point in time in baseball, Ian Kinsler was a, a big name player. Um, when he played for the Rangers, he was really, really good. One of the best second basemen in baseball. Um, as a Detroit Tiger at this point in his career, he's probably five years past his best days. And while there's nothing wrong with signing a veteran player, to get Ian Kinsler would require a trade. And that's the part that concerns me more than Ian Kinsler himself. Uh, yesterday I talked about the Rule 5 draft and the guys that the Mets were going to have to try to protect and trying to figure out who to protect. The Mets ended up protecting, uh, sorry, the Mets ended up leaving uh, Wilmer Bucera off of that list. They left Juan Urania off that list. Um, they left another guy off that list, Mickey Janis, who is a, a, a right-handed pitcher. Um, the, the point to all of this is, and you're probably wondering, well, who are those guys? And I could give you the guys that the Mets protected, by adding to the 40 man and you'll probably say the same thing who are those guys and the reason I bring it up is that the Mets just don't have the depth of prospects to make a trade that isn't a big difference making trade and that's how I view this Ian Kinsler suggestion this is not a difference making trade it is not worth expending valuable prospect resources even though they're not big name prospects um, there, there are still resources that the Mets have available to them. And I feel as though if they make a move for a guy like Kinsler, who is, a, uh, who is at this point uh, a second tier at best option at second base, then they're wasting an opportunity to use those prospects on something more important. Uh, I talked about the bullpen being important. Um, I've also talked about the person who I think should be manning second base. And I'll say it again, it's D. Gordon. And that's where I believe Sandy Alderson's traditional patience will work to the Mets' advantage. Sandy's always been very patient. He's always been waiting to let, uh, willing to wait to let the market develop for certain players. Um, it worked for Cespedes um, uh, two years ago when they signed him to the contract that they ended up signing him to. Certainly a far less rich contract than um, Cespedes was looking to get, but it was the contract that he got, and it was only doable because Sandy waited. He's like the opposite of Omar Minaya. Omar Minaya used to bid against himself a lot of times, trying to get the guy signed as quickly and as as promptly as possible, a lot of times at his own detriment. Um, Ali Perez, Luis Castillo, those are two contracts that were just ridiculous when you consider that there weren't other teams readily pursuing either of those guys, and it didn't stop Omar from handing out three-year contracts and four-year contracts to those two guys. So um, the D. Gordon issue, as I mentioned yesterday, ties to Giancarlo Stanton. Nothing's going to happen until something happens with Stanton, and something could be as simple as, we're not going to be able to deal him, so let's try to deal something else. You know, if the Marlins aren't able to unload Giancarlo Stanton and all that money that they owe him, they're going to be more likely to unload a guy like D. Gordon, and they're going to be more inclined to accept less in terms of the quality of the prospect they'll get in the trade because they'll be more interested in dumping more money, more salary. Again, if they're forced to keep Giancarlo Stanton. And I'm, I'm saying it like that, and it's sort of funny, like if they're forced to keep the MV, the National League MVP <laughs> from 2017, um, but that's the Marlins, you know, that's how they roll. They, they don't they don't like to have big money on the payroll and with new ownership coming in, it makes a lot of sense that they want to get more of a fresh start, even if it means parting ways with one of the most prolific sluggers in the National League and in all of baseball. So again, I think the Mets need to wait. I hope that this is just a rumor that it was just a uh, Tigers maybe saying, hey, we have Ian Kinsler, he can play second base. Mets, you need a second baseman, right? And Sandy being Sandy, poker face, sort of like, yeah, we need a second baseman. 
and that's that. And maybe that's all it was. I'm hoping that's all it was and there's nothing more to it. But again, we'll have to watch as the, uh, the market develops. And again, I, I'm gonna say it for like the ninth time in two days, it is all going to start and stop with what happens with Giancarlo Stan. That's gonna set the tone for this year's hot stove. And I, for one, am excited to look at it. So um, it's Tuesday instead of Wednesday, but this is gonna be my last post of the week. Uh, unless something massive happens between now and the end of the week, which I don't expect. Uh, so this will be it for the week. I, uh, I thank you for watching. I wish all of you a happy Thanksgiving. Eat lots of turkey, think lots of good thoughts, take a nap after you eat, and have a dream about the Mets winning the World Series in 2018. That's certainly what I'm going to do. Uh, we can dream, right? No one can take that away from us. So, again, thanks very much for watching. Follow me on Twitter if you're not already doing so, at Mr. Underscore Met. And as always, let's go Mets.